Hi everyone, I'm going to jump on a thread today that was set by Ed and his channel on my turntable. And Ed's a relatively, he's got a relatively new channel, I think it's only been up about a month or so. And he's asked us to give a bit of love to the female artists out there because the vinyl community is too male centric. And I have done in the past um, a video on my favorite uh, female singers. Um, but some of these that I'm going to mention today aren't going to be, uh, weren't included in that video. So these are not, not necessarily my favorites, but they are prominent ones in my collection. Now, he's asked us to uh, kind of name and show uh, between five and ten uh, female artists. And uh, ideally, um, it's a bonus if we've seen them live before. So I'm going to start with some of the ones that I've seen live. So here goes. Right, the first one is The Dirt and the Stars by Mary Chapin Carpenter. So this is uh, Mary Chapin Carpenter. Her most famous album is Come On, Come On. Um, so late 70s, late 70s, late 80s, I should say. Uh, and she's a kind of a crossover between country and folk. She's got an absolutely great, beautiful voice, but she's got this rasp when she plays the rockier numbers. Gorgeous, gorgeous voice. Great, great singer. So that's Mary Chapin Carpenter. And I saw her 93 or something like that. Something like that. Anyway, the second artist I saw was way, way back in 1979. And it's this young lady. Well, she was young here. And this is called Kate, of course, Kate Bush. And this is her second album, Lionheart. And I remember seeing her at... Um, Sunland Empire in the UK. It's the only tour she ever did. Um, but what also came out... No, let's just say something about the gig. I'm a rock fan. I love Kate Bush's first album. This is probably my favourite Kate Bush album. This one or Ariel. Um, but the show was like a, like a dance event. It was like... Uh, it wasn't a rock concert. It was all super choreographed, wonderful um, sets, um, all these like all, all these um, moves <laughs> with the backing dancers and everything. And uh, you're left thinking. I mean, I, I'm kind of back in the day. I used to go to dance. I used to enjoy contemporary dance and also uh, classical ballet. Uh, not that I could dance to save my life, but. I love the music and I just love the spectacle. So I was kind of tuned in to this idea of seeing Kate Bush do this sort of show. But man, it wasn't a rock gig. And it wasn't one of the best rock gigs I've ever seen. Um, one of the things that did come out some years later from the same tour is a CD and video double pack, which is live at Hammersmith Audion, where she did the res residency six, seven years ago, something like that. It has a CD in it. She's got a pretty decent set list from the time. First two albums, obviously dominant. And this one has a VHS that is still sealed. I've not watched it. I think in truth, I think I've got it on um, on DVD or something, or I've seen it. But yeah, I mean, Kate Bush, absolute legend, of course. But there you go. I, I just not interesting enough for me to crack open a VHS to, to watch her perform live after seeing it in the flesh. Okay, uh, right, that's two. Three, number three, is another um, American uh, country folk crossover, and that's Nancy Griffith. She released a 12-inch single in, I think it was about 1987, called, is it I Knew Love? I think it's I Knew Love. And I've, I've got it on 12-inch single, and it was uh, she was getting a lot of attention in the music press. Quite a diminutive figure. Uh, she's sadly gone now. Uh, I think she died last year or the year before. Um, but she's had an absolutely gorgeous, gorgeous voice. And just like Mary Chapin Carpenter, that beauty in the voice has a rasp when she needs to bring it on. So Nancy Griffith, she was great, really excellent. Somebody very, very different who I saw in 1987 at Roundhay Park in Leeds. Is this Trollope? Sorry. This, uh, this singer, uh, Madonna. Um, this is a, obviously a later album. Ray of Light, uh, William Orbit's all over this album. So it's got that kind of, um, oh, it's not ambient, it's not the word, but it's got that kind of electronic rhythm thing going on. 
But in 1987, she was touring. Um, it wasn't True Blue. I think maybe Who's That Girl, the soundtrack. And there was Round Day Park as this big Victorian park in Leeds. And the most memorable thing about the whole gig was that on leaving, we had, we had thousands of cars going through uh, kind of uh, stone columned metal gates. So you can imagine this Victorian park, which has got these electronic, the, these, these metal gates, um, but with uh, two columns of uh, sandstone or something like that. <laughs> and of course you can't extend that. And, it, and you basically got thousands of cars just going funneling through this narrow gap. I think it took us two hours to get off the site after the gig. And that then meant another hour and a half up the road back home to Newcastle. So uh, yeah, that's Madonna. Right, that's number one, two, three, four. And the last one, no, it's not the last, second last one I saw live. Hold on a minute, is it? No, no, I've got a couple more live. And I saw this lady in 1990 at Nelson Mandela's birthday concert uh, at Wembley Stadium. And that's the one where Mandela himself showed up and waved to the crowd. So he'd just been out of prison, I think, uh, two or three months or something like that. And they had this big celebratory concert. All the usual suspects, Yusundur, um, Clapton, I think, Dire Straits, Peter Gabriel, uh, Star Studded Affair. It was a nice day out. It was really good. Uh, but she blew everyone away. I mean, the purity in this lady's voice was just fantastic. Just cut through everything. Very memorable and very different to everything else. But that's the only time I saw her. Um, I think she only, only sang two or three songs. Uh, this one less well known is Wendy Smith from Prefab Sprout. This is their second album. Steve McQueen. It's called Two Wheels Good, I think, in the USA because of copyright uh, reasons or something like that. And this is Wendy, where she does kind of harmony vocals with Paddy McAloon, Wendy here, and Paddy up here. And there's the main songwriter, as, as fans of Prepass Sprout will know. Lovely soft voice. Doesn't take lead, but she has this gorgeous, these gorgeous embellishments to, uh, to Paddy's voice. Really good. Uh, that's a band from the northeast of England. Here's another one, and I've shown this album before. And this is from uh, a kind of a folk band called the Unthanks, which has Becky and Rachel Unthank, who do the this Geordie accented singing style. Which, if you're from the area from where I'm originally from, it's very broad dialect, you know, very strong accent, but it works really well on these songs. Um, Classic folk, storytelling, unbelievable. Very different vocalists, quite unusual, but really good. She's more of a conventional singer. She sings kind of from the throat, na throat maybe nasally. It's not like describing that very well, but quite a unique voice as, as, as Becky there, but really good. So those are the female artists that I've seen live. And I've just picked two or three others. Oh, so I've got another one, <laughs> another one I've seen live, but I'll come as last. And this... Next one, number eight, is Beth Gibbons. Now, I Beth Gibbons from Porter's Head. Now, I've had this album on CD for since it, since it was released, and I was wasn't much of a fan of Porter's Head. It's it, it, they came along at a time when I was hoovering up loads of CDs, uh, just a bit like this next artist. Uh, lots of CDs. Um, I was buying them faster than I could listen to them, so I was listening to these things two or three times and if it didn't grab my attention it just sat there gathering dust for years and years and years but every now and again I'll, I'll, I'll dip in to the CD collection uh, and of course the record collection and I will um, play something that really captures my attention now now I begin to get it and then I listen to it and make sure and go through all of the catalogue and I've done the same with, with Beth Gibbons um, very varied voice very um affectatious is that the right word she kind of seems like she's putting it on a little bit so almost all of the tracks on this album kind of sound she has got it just sings with a different singing style she's very 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 well renowned and she's a good songwriter as well so i've been listening to this i bought this on vinyl good i think earlier this year finally got into buying it on vinyl and i played it several times and i'm really enjoying it so yeah i do like it it's definitely kind of a late night lights down low sort of feel 
uh, yeah, this is another artist that I hoovered up all the CDs before I started getting into the vinyl, and and that was uh, PJ Harvey. And now I know that she's got had associations with Nick Cave in the past, and to me, she's a little bit like like Nick Cave in terms of the way I've consumed the music. Uh, bought a lot of stuff didn't listen to it with real intention for a while and then suddenly it clicked and then I'm suddenly right through the whole catalog and I'm listening to it you know on and on and on and on and so I think what really I mean I've had some vinyl albums by by PJ and um, of course CDs for quite some years but I think last year or the year before the record company released a whole bunch of demo albums demo releases so for each of the studio albums there was a, a disc of um, demos that were released packaged beautifully very simply just like this one and um, I hoovered those up and they're absolutely fantastic um, you wouldn't call them audiophile but they're not rough either they're really well done so just kind of different versions of tracks that fans you know, have got a deep appreciation of her music. Will really appreciate the differences. But to me, I'm just enjoying it as I'm learning to get into it. And finally, number ten is Emmy Lou, Emmy Lou Harris. Now, this is an album called All I Intended to Be. When I saw her, it was 2003. She was touring "Stumble into Grace." Um, but yeah, what a pure voice, beautiful lady. Incredible, really, really good. So yeah, I managed to see Emmy Lou as well. So anyway, thanks Ed for setting that thread. That's the female vocalists I want to highlight today. So I'll see you in the next video. Bye for now.